In this video, I'm covering the nuances of patient positioning and room setup for a robotic low interior section with total mesorectal excision for both the XI and SI robotic systems. Now, I know that this might sound like a trivial and boring topic to dedicate an entire video to, but trust me, the importance of patient positioning cannot be overstated, for both patient safety and progression of a frustration-free case. I'm Dr. Mark Solomon, Chairman and Chief of Surgery at Florida Hospital Altamont and Program Director of the Minimally Invasive Colorectal Surgical Fellowship at the Colon and Rectal Clinic of Orlando. This video is the second in a much larger series that will help you master the robotic low anterior section with total mesorectal excision. And if you haven't watched the first video on the 21 steps of a low anterior section, go back to the playlist and take a look at it. And while you're there, Make sure you subscribe to the channel since I'm updating content in this and in many other series regularly. So for today's discussion, I'm going to break it down into two sections. First, patient positioning and second, room setup. As far as patient positioning, patients are obviously positioned in the low lithotomy position. So from beginning to end, let's run down the best practices for what this looks like. Patients in my operating room are placed in a nice, thick egg crate with a tuck sheet that sits on top of the egg crate. And the first thing that I do in the operating room is I pull the patient down low enough to where the coccyx and ischial spines are what's on the lowest part of the bed. And I want to make sure that the buttocks and the perineum are easily exposed. And then I place both legs in Allen stirrups. Now, the most important thing here is to make sure that the patient's heels are touching the back of the stirrup. And what this does is it offloads the calf and ensures that the posterior compartment of the leg doesn't have any undue pressure, which can lead to a compartment syndrome. And what I do is I then place the legs at around 100 to 120 degrees flexion like I have in the picture here, and I check the heels obsessively to make sure that there is no undue tension. And then once I'm happy, then I fix the stirrups in place. Once I do this, then I turn my attention to the arms. Now the arms, like any laparoscopic case, are wrapped and placed in generous foam padding, and the tuck sheet wraps over the arm and under the mattress in my case. The hands are kept at a neutral position. Now you can see from the picture here that this arm is not in a neutral position. It's actually kind of pronated here. So what you actually want to do is to make sure that you place the arm at a neutral position with foam within the hand. And this is the exact configuration that you want to have your upper extremities in, where it's in a neutral position with the foam within the hand. And you can see here the tuck sheet goes from underneath the patient on top of the foam over the arm and tucks underneath the mattress. And that's how my patient's arms are secured to the bed. I then place foam or a sheet over the chest, basically at the level of nipples and tape the patient to the bed snugly, but not too tight. I want to be able to easily get a few fingers in between the foam and the chest and his arms. And in this case here, you can see that the Foley goes over the patient's right leg. There's adequate padding and securement of the patient's upper extremities. And this generous thick foam pad, as you see, that basically spans from the neck all the way down to the buttocks. And then I test to make sure that the patient is safely secured to the bed by placing the bed in as much trunellomorg as it'll give me, just to make sure that there's no slippage. As far as room setup, XI doesn't really matter. Just bring the robot in on whichever side that the room allows. Now, so for SI, I basically line up the camera arm with the camera port coming 30 degrees off of the left hip. And I drive the robot in so that the legs of the robot straddle the base of the bed. As you can see from the diagram, these are the legs of the robot. And you want to make sure that the drive shaft, the camera arm, and the camera port are essentially all in line with each other. This is a picture of what it looks like once the SI robot is docked. Now, as far as robotic arm configuration. You can see from this diagram does a good job of showing that the camera arm needs to be broken to the right. The number one arm also needs to be broken to the right in the same direction. And the number two and three arms are broken in the opposite direction with these large joints for you to have adequate distance between all of the robotic arms. So that about sums up this discussion on the nuances of patient positioning and room setup for the robotic LAR. Now as a reminder, this is the second video in a larger teaching series on mastery of the robotic LER with TME. And if you haven't already done so, please watch the first video and make sure you subscribe to this channel to get notifications on upcoming videos in this and in many other series. Please stay tuned, stay engaged, and definitely leave me some comments on what are the content you like covered. Thanks and have a great day.